Hi everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. We are in our fourth week of Lent and we are living in quite an extraordinary time and throughout history during such times require extraordinary measures and we are hopeful and prayerful that what we are doing together is going to help to save lives. So we're all in the same boat doing our part and making sacrifices so we can all be safe. Uh, this week I came across a story, an extraordinary story which comes out of Italy and in Italy they've seen more COVID-19 cases and deaths than anywhere else in this world. And last Thursday a hospital in northern Italy they needed these special venturi valves for their respirators to keep their patients alive but the manufacturer they had run out of these valves and they were high demand. So two techies, uh, Christian Fracassini and Alessandro Moromali, they searched for plans to see if they could 3D print these valves. And so they went to the manufacturer asking them if they could uh, provide dimensions for the parts, but they refused because it was infringement of these patents for these parts. Since this was an extraordinary time and lives were at stake, they decided at the risk of a lawsuit to create these 3D prints of these valves from scratch. So they printed it an initial batch of about 10 and then 100 and they gave them out for free and they recognized that this was saving lives and the print only costed a dollar but the original part it costed over 10,000. So these 3D printed parts they might not be very durable but they were able to help hundreds of people. So extraordinary times require extraordinary ideas. In another example, probably closer to home, you may have heard the Spirit of York, a alcohol, a gin distillery. They recently announced their operations would be directed to making hand sanitizers instead of alcohol. So they are almost ready to go. I heard that today they will be selling each bottle of hand sanitizers for under $3 and two bottle limit um, but for anyone who can't afford them who are over 65 they're giving them out for free and all the proceeds of this will go to our community food banks so quite an extraordinary story and at times like this these are needed so today our Lenten text is a story actually it's two stories uh, two extraordinary stories of tragedy and in these stories, Jesus teaches about repentance. So let's uh, look at the main idea for today. So the main idea is an essential first step towards salvation and faith is repentance. Without repentance, we cannot know God deeply. Repentance is a change of heart or a change of mind towards God and away from ourselves. So that's the main idea. So this theme of repentance, it is quite core during the season of Lent. And the word repent comes from the Greek word menatonia. And the best translation for menatonia is a turn of mind, a change of heart. But unfortunately, during the fourth century, a theologian by the name of Saint Jerome, he translated menatona into petitentia, meaning penance or to do penance. So penance uh, is a form of punishment given out to you or you do it yourself. So with St. Rome's definition of penance, it is now understood as enforced punishment. So you can see where this road has led. So faith in God has now become understood as doing, earning something to get God's approval. It's about right and wrong, black and white. So repentance becomes one of those power words. It's one of these Christian words which has been weaponized by Christians. And often when a Christian is new to their faith, they're often drawn and attracted to power. Of course, God is powerful. But when you link power with religion, it suddenly goes down a bad road pretty quickly and power gets to your head and you take great pride in that you think you are better 
you are more important than others and you take pride telling others how right you are, how smart you are, and that you have a better understanding of the Bible. And when power is the main thing, you tend to emphasize the all-powerful and judging nature of God. And all of a sudden, God becomes this in-the-sky great policeman trying to keep law and order. So now, repent is a word that's used to manipulate people rather than allowing it to convict people towards a change of heart and mind. So it's a word that we use sometimes to shame others for just for the sh sake of shaming. And I don't think this is the kind of repentance that Jesus is pointing us towards. So let's look at our story. In the first story, we have an extraordinary tragedy. Luke 13, 1. Now there were some present at the time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. So how is this a tragedy? How do you end up mixing human blood with animal sacrifices? Well, apparently this is what happened. A group of Jews, they had headed up from Galilee to Jerusalem to worship God, and they brought with them animal sacrifices to bring to the temple. And the governor in charge at that time was Pilate. Pontius Pilate and so his soldiers were watching making sure there was no potential Jewish troublemakers that would incite violence or revolt but for some unknown reason Pilate knee-jerked he sent his soldiers into the temple while the Jews were worshiping and offering sacrifices and the soldiers cut them down in cold blood so the blood of the Galileans were mixed with the blood of the animal sacrifices we can't confirm all these details in a secular text, but we know that Pilate was capable of incredible brutality. So this is an extraordinary act of violence and brutality, especially in a place of worship. So the followers of Jesus tried to make sense of this. They're asking, why Jesus? There has to be an explanation. Were those Galileans, were they worse sinners than the rest? They must have done something wrong. They must have committed or done something horrible that God would abandon them. So, this would have been the perfect opportunity for Jesus to give a clear explanation of evil and injustice in the world. But no, Jesus doesn't answer them in this way. Instead, verse 3, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. What kind of answer is this? Repent? It's an unexpected and extraordinary answer. In times of tragedy, people are looking for what? They're looking for sympathy. They're looking for understanding and support. But when Jesus calls them repent, it sounds so cold, so out of place, very unusual. And then Jesus decides to bring their attention to a second extraordinary tragedy. Story two, the tragedy in Siloam. So there was an ancient tower in Jerusalem and apparently there was some sort of inherent structural problem with this tower, maybe defective materials or it was designed wrong. And then one day it just toppled over and crushed 18 people. Tragic. And again, Jesus asked them, who's to blame for this? Do you think they were more guilty than the other people? Verse five, I tell you no. Unless you repent, you too will all perish. Again, an extraordinary tragedy, and Jesus doesn't seem very pastoral here. No sympathy, no compassion. His answer, repent, or you will perish too. So let's take a step back. What's the point of this? Where is Jesus trying to take this? Again, Jesus gives a very extraordinary answer. It is said, Tragedy knows no bounds, neither class, nor race, nor philosophy, nor education, nor age. So in other words, tragedy comes to all. While all tragedy is a result of sin, sometimes sin leads to tragedy. That is true. So let's look at this for a moment. So let's look at disasters, our very current situation right now. Is this the result of human sin? What about the wildfires in Australia 
or the wild locust outbreak in Africa? Is it the result of human sin? Sin sometimes leads to tragedy, but not all tragedy is the result of sin. I think perhaps the best way to visualize this is a small circle. A small circle inside a large circle. So this large circle is all the tragedy, the, the random acts, what we see right now with this COVID-19. And there is no way that we can control these things, like the tower that fell over, the worshipers who were cut down. But Jesus is calling their attention not to the big tragedies. He's saying, look at your own life. Look where you've gone wrong. And he narrows it down to the small circle. And he says, look at your life. He says, how have you turned away from God and your family? And he says, make a choice. Change your mind, change your direction. Turn to God's forgiveness and mercy. So, the, of course, these big circles, it causes us to question God. But Jesus shrinks that circle down and he avoids talking about catastrophes and tragedies. Instead, he draws us back to his teaching. Look at your life. Look at your own heart. Consider the pending tragedy if you are without God. So life is indeed unpredictable. It's fragile and very finite. So that's why he calls them to repent. Turn back to God. As I said, repentance is not just penance. It's not just being penalized for doing something wrong. Part of it, repentance is penance, but menatoya means turning around, changing your mind, looking it at a different picture. And repentance is like opening the door. You turn and you see God's mercy, forgiveness, and you make a decision. It's a choice that every one of you have to make. Consider uh, this example. Consider a man who's in really poor health. Maybe he's morbidly obese. And because of his obesity, he has a whole bunch of problems like hypertension, high cholesterol, diabetes, etc. In modern medicine, there's a lot that it has to offer to help this man, including surgery and nutrition and medicines. But in order for this man to access the healing and the health, a number of things have to happen. First, he needs to admit and recognize he has a problem. He has to recognize his condition is serious enough to need help. So second, he has to inform someone. He's got to be in contact with someone who can explain his condition to him. And thirdly, he needs to decide to go for help, to seek help of medical professionals, to, to have a schedule so that he can go and make an appointment to see his doctor. So not until all three steps have taken place can he receive healing. It's not good enough to say, yeah, I know, I'm not really good at my diet. And it's not good enough to say we have a great healthcare system with great medicines. He actually has to take the, all the steps, admit he needs help. Then he needs to reach out, connect with the medical, com medical community. And then he actually has to take the medicines, adjust his diet. And this is an analogy of God's gift of salvation. We have to be able to see the gravity of our own situation, to recognize that there is help available to you, but you have to decide to want this help. And repentance is this new mind, receiving God's love and mercy and forgiveness. But it has to start with making a choice. So in this time of Lent, Jesus invites you to look at your circle, your heart, and turn back towards him. So there may be areas that we need to repent. For example, are you critical of people? Do you privately judge them? Or maybe you're very impatient. You get irritated too easily. Are you true to your words? Or do you tend to exaggerate for your own benefit? Or perhaps your eyes, do they lead you to look at things which lead to impure thoughts? Maybe you have done wrong. Maybe you've hurt someone, but you haven't made any restitution. 
Maybe you're living your life as if God wasn't there at all. You only trust in yourself, in your own ways, in your own thoughts. We need to repent. And God calls us to that. Let us pray. God, we are grateful for your word to us this day. We also come to you recognizing that we depend on you for everything. You have blessed us with much, but often we've taken your blessings for granted. So we come to you in confession. We choose to change our minds, to change our hearts back to you so we can receive your forgiveness. We confess there are times we have not listened well to each other. We have spoken to our loved ones in haste, in anger, in fear. We confess there are times when we have not loved each other and when we have unfairly judged others because we don't understand them. God, restore us, have mercy on us, and inspire in us ways to show your extraordinary love to each other. Guide our hearts and actions to give greater care, kindness, and generosity in the midst of these fearful times. Hear our prayers, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.